LaMonda from 107.5 WBLS, and I am sitting next to the incomparable Adam Blackstone. What's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? What's up? Thank you for having me, Dan. Thank you for being here. I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. New York City is nothing like it. Listen, let's just set the stage because if I were to roll up and say, Adam Blackstone, you know, the man who, uh, Go ahead and set the stage, because I can do it, but I want you to do yeah, it. Yeah, I think that um, the good thing about what I've been able to curate over the past 20 years is people know me for different things. Mm -hmm. So there's one section of people that be like, oh, okay, that's the guy that plays with Jay-Z or did, or did Fade to Black and rocks with the roots at times. There's another section that says I do all the award shows. Uh, BET Awards, Grammys, Oscars, all of those things. And then um, in this later area of my life, it's the guy that is creating legacy. And that is my artist's name as far as my album um, and also what I'm doing uh, uh, on tour, just really at curating what I'm calling the legacy experience, just to have people know that music is impactful. Mm -hmm. It has the power to change lives. And then I'm sharing the stage with some of my most incredible friends who have voices and musicianship that to impact the world as well. Okay. So that was the PC answer. <laughs> Rewind. So oh. on a street corner, yeah. just talking, you know, to my peeps. Yeah. Adam Blackstone. He's kind of like the Quincy Jones of this era. I like that. He's behind so many musical artists. <laughs> Multifaceted bassist, uh, music director. Remember Dr. Dre, Eminem, Mary J. Blige, <laughs> that Super Bowl. What was that, 46? That was Super Bowl, yep. Boom! Yep. That He's the musical director behind it. He put that whole thing together. Let's take it back. Super Bowl, remember Rihanna? All red, blood red. Everything <laughs> red, red, red. Red, red, red. Boom! Adam Blackstone, he did it. Yes. Okay? Yes. Um, let me keep going. Yeah, it's a little, you know, JT, Super Bowl, Shakira, J-Lo. Um, it's been great. It's been great. Re, Dr. Dre, um, Shirley Ralph last year for the anthem, Reba McIntyre for the anthem, Jasmine Sullivan for the anthems. Um, my, my Super Bowl NFL connection has really spanned these past six years. And I think it has also allowed us to see um, how impactful music is in a sports space. You know what I mean? Like we're essentially fitting a concert into the middle of the biggest football game. So that's been cool. And I'm super excited about that. NBA All-Star Games, halftimes, all that. It's really good. Like I, I thought I was gonna play ball at some point, but now I'm, I'm, I'm involved in the sport in a different way. So, all right, it feels good. So we got, we got one fun fact. Yeah, it feels Adam good. Blackstone, the man behind the Super Bowl halftime performances. Yeah. The really important ones that we remember. Uh, so you got Kendrick Lamar. All we're right. Gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna hold off on that one right now. We too, too, too early. Too early. No, no problem. No problem. Let's let's take it back. There's yes. so much more, but I just wanted to drop that on you. But when I say he's like the Quincy Jones of this era or a very famous music director, most of us here at WBLS and beyond, we know Ray Chu. He's Absolutely. a big, huge great, friend, great, great friend of the station. Yeah, I just kinda was like working Ray, with Ray Chu. Kind of like the Ray Chu of, of our era, if you will. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, so much respect for Ray. So much respect for another fellow colleague, Ricky Minor. Um, Hold on. Ricky Minor. See, we're trying to connect. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, connecting yeah. the dots. We know Ricky Minor right. because we know his work. Remember Whitney Houston, mm -hmm. the national anthem that she did like no other and made it her own? That's because Ricky Minor, a music director like Adam Blackstone, for sure. basically arranged that yes, for Nick. Yeah. So this is the brother who's kind of like a Ricky Minor in that way. I am. Just a, a different generation. I think I, what, I, what I like to do that um, sort of transcends um, genre and all of that is like really get into the youth. Uh, I've been able to MD Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. But I've also been able to MD Sexy Red and Glorilla. You know what I mean? That's and I've a been huge. Yeah, and I've been able to do Justin Timberlake, but I've also been able to do Nas and Nicki Minaj. So, so you know, I'm really, you know, really about the music. And at the end of the day, I'm a black man 
hip hop head, R and B, gospel, and even those outside of the genre, they call me to kind of infuse my own soul and self into their music. So it feels good. You know hmm. what I mean? It feels good. All right. So let's go old school. Yeah. Jay Z. Yes. Oh, old school. <laughs> Because hip hop is, you know, on the AARP plan. Let's just keep it 100. Oh, okay. right? When 50, I mean, you when, know. When, when hip hop is, is over 50, then that's when we can say, let's go that's old very true. school. That's very true. So, a big shout out to Mike. Mike's behind the cameras, right? Mike's like, Adam Blackstone, household name. He was actually playing with Jay when Jay was doing his live sets. That's right. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> so. Talk to us about. How much you've worked with Jay-Z? I've worked with Jay for literally 20 years. I was at his farewell concert uh, playing bass, Fade to Black, at Madison Square Garden. And, um, you know, fast forward 10 years from that, we opened the Barclays Center and played eight shows in a row to open the Barclays Center. Uh, fast forward 10 years after that, here we are at the Super Bowl producing Dr. Dre and Snoop and Rihanna Super Bowl and you know just super thankful for Jay's impact on my life. Thankful for Rock Nation. Um, that concert, uh, Fade to Black, alone spawned so many relationships for me. You know what I mean? I met. Um, this random dude from Chicago in a pink polo shirt and went and worked with him named Kanye West. You know what I mean? I then from Kanye, I met this Barbadian girl opening for Kanye named Rihanna. And then from Rihanna, I met this Canadian rapper from J Toronto and I met Drake and, and, and from Drake, I, it's just it's on and on and on. So that concert for sure was the catalyst to my relationship building and that's what I tell young people even now, regardless of what area of the industry you're in, behind the camera, in front of the camera, rapper, actress, singer, producer, it's all about relationships. You know what I mean? Like I'm here today with you based off of relationships and I'm thankful that, you know, those relationships that matter can sustain a 20 year career. And, um, you know, I, Jay just did the Tony Awards for me. You know, he showed up for uh, Alicia and myself to be a guest at the Hell's Kitchen moment. And okay. like, those things, er, those things on. are great. Hold on. New York, you know. See, because we here are in, obviously, New York City. We're just we minutes here. away. We're minutes from the Great White Way. That's right. So there's a Broadway play by oh, the yeah. name of Hell's Kitchen that's based on the life and times of Alicia Keys. Yes. Who was raised in Hell's Kitchen, New York's Hell's Kitchen. Uh -huh. The music director behind Hell's Kitchen, <laughs> say it with me, boom. Yes. <laughs> I was so thankful to not only music direct, uh, orchestrate and arrange and be music supervisor for the play. Just to see, a, you know, a black man transitioning into Broadway is like, I never even imagined that it's growing up. I was like, Adam. you know, not knowing the impact of what music would have on my life. And so I'm super duper thankful for that. Alicia, me and her have been working on this. I've been working on this for eight, nine years. She's been working on this for about 12 or 13. And so uh, when it finally got that green light at the Schubert Theater right down on Broadway, um, we tried to set, set Broadway ablaze and do some things culturally. Uh, so many women um, of color a part of this yes. production, uh, so many minorities a part of it. Um, and then just even sonically, what I was brought in to do was infuse the hip hop and R&B of when she grew up into a stage play, you know what I mean? So, so take us into that world. Yeah. Like Take us a day on the job with you as you are Oof. musically directing Hell's Kitchen. Give us something that you yeah. would do that we would understand or that we can hold on to. So the, the, the show is based off the catalog of Alicia Keys. So we have a song like No One, right? Which everybody knows from radio. But the, screen, the play writer, Chris Diaz said, I wanna talk about this. How would we arrange this if a mother spoke to a daughter? And said, I just want you close so you can stay forever. I'm like, okay. Well, if we're doing it like that, it wouldn't be heavy drums, doom, doom. It would be light piano. And so I sat at the piano and let the mom speak to the daughter. And then when the daughter comes in, it's a little more aggressive. So I said, let me add the drums because it's a youthful element to it. So those are the things 
the music geek side of me loves to do um, and then build and arrange. And that's even how I'm able to, you know, cross into the artist mode is because all of the experience that I've had arranging and MDing, I put that on myself now for my albums. And so I'm like, what do the people like? I know what they like for another artist. I'm going to try to infuse that in my own artistry. And so it's been cool um, taking that formula from Hell's Kitchen, mm -hmm. um, allowing the world to accept it and see it and see this, um, you know, this, this, this black daughter with a mixed race parent mm -hmm. tell the story through music that we all know and love has been... But that you rearranged. I, twist, I twisted it up and rearranged it and, and allowed it to be from everyone's perspective. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. So. Did you see the play? Do, how, how, what was your reaction? What was your emotional Opening reaction? Night, yeah. Um, as, you, as you literally, literally... That's so funny. I, I, because I've been in it for so long, I like to look at the reaction of other people okay. while I'm there. Okay. And like this play makes you cry, it gets you upset, it gets you angry, it gets you it gets you in a in a spirit of family, it gets you in a spirit of gratitude as well. So when I see all of these different emotions coming from people in the audience, I, I feel very proud about what we were able to accomplish because we've telling we're telling a story through the gift of music. Yeah, it's it's very it's way more legato though. Ooh. One breath. I need that whole thing as one breath. The perspective that I think people get from listening to some of their favorite songs, like No One or Girl on Fire, If I Ain't Got You, it shifts your perspective to actually make you think about not only the lyric content, but what does that mean to you? All right, take us a day on the job with Adam Blackstone as you are getting ready to arrange a Super Bowl halftime performance. Ooh, well, that depends on the artist. Uh, okay. Let's say, working on Rihanna's show, she was pregnant, so I didn't get to see her much. Versus Dr. Dre's show, where he was there every minute of the day because he's that hands-on, and as a music producer, he wants to make sure that I'm, you know, sonically making sure things are cool. You know, the day in the life for the Rihanna moment would really be about me getting with the choreographer, getting with my partner, Omar Edwards, to making sure our choreography and the set design matches with the music. A day in the life on a different Super Bowl like Dr. Dre and Snoop is really about us conveying the story of what hip hop meant to people and how we're gonna impact it and make sure hip hop is, you know, it, this being the first ever full hip, that was the first ever full hip hop Super Bowl, it was like, what can we do to make sure as impactful as possible? And we did that, brought home the Emmy, uh, I'm so thankful about that for outstanding musical direction and uh, yeah, from there it's only it's only up for the culture. We see Kendrick is next. Yes. Um, you know, Jay Z and Rock Nation have been able to put people in place mm -hmm. um, that can be culturally impactful. Speaking of the Emmy, yeah, you also are nominated for a Grammy. Yes, I am because yes, I am. of your work on, on Hell's, Hell's Kitchen. Kitchen. Yes, this year is the Hell's Kitchen nomination, Best Musical Theater Album. Ooh. Best musical theater album. Yeah. And up for a Grammy, February 4th in LA, 2025. Or third. Second. Second. Yep. That one. <laughs> February so we 2nd. Wanna, we want to watch that category intently or make sure we Google search to find for out sure. that you walk with I'm the a, No, no, no. I'm bringing it right back home. Okay, I'm bringing, that's I'm a, right. We're going to share the trophy here. <laughs> that's what's so, up. So it's all good. But I'm super thankful for that. Um, again, you know, being nominated three times prior as an artist. Um, and then seeing my name for this as a producer and arranger and, 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 and very much instrumental in the creation of Hell's Kitchen cast album, it means the world to me. And then I think that it allows young brown and black kids to see that you just don't have to do one thing. That's either. right. You know what I mean? I'm in the musical theater category, which my trophy is going to look just as good as the Beyonce album of the year trophy. So it's like... You know, however you can get in to impact people through your gift, I think we should. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I want to go backwards and then we're going to come forward a little okay. bit. So, born in Trenton. Yes. But you were raised in the borough. I was raised in the borough. <laughs> what you know about the borough? Look, 
I have some Philadelphia roots. Okay. You know, I used to work, I should say it like this. I used to work in the Philadelphia market before I came to beautiful New York. So Willingboro. So Willingboro, New like, Jersey, if you know, then you know. If you know, you know <laughs> for sure. Willingboro to me has been the mini Motown of the East Coast for a very, a very long great time. Great analogy, yes. And I, I think that you can find so much talent. Um and a big part of that, if I can be honest, we're going off on a little bit of a tangent, but like the the Caucasian workers and teachers in Willingboro never like put us down. Mm. They always uplifted us. And I don't know if that's because they were the minority in the town, you know what I mean? But I always felt so nurtured by my teachers, of course, my parents as well, allowing me to see and show me that I can't do anything less than be great. Um, but yeah, that town just nurtured so much talent from City High to Boys to Men to Ty Tribbett to myself to, you know, athletes, Carl Lewis, Sean yeah. Phillips. Like, yeah. um, it's so many different gifted idioms coming out of Willingboro. And so when I moved to Philly, it was so ironic because that was black excellence for yes. me, Willingboro. Yes. I didn't know I was the minority in the world yeah. until I got to a big city. And I was like, well, it's too late now. And they've already embedded in me that we the best. <laughs> and so, you know, it's 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 a wrap. You know what I mean? And so I was able to 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 really take what Willemboro infused in me and take it out to the world, for sure. You know, and speaking of, of what was infused in you, you know, the fruit don't fall far from the tree. Your yes. father's a jazz artist. A fun fact that I love about Adam Blackstone is that he started to learn to play the drums at a very early age. Yes. But then he segued, I think at the age of nine, and your father discovered you had perfect pitch. Yes, he di he discovered that I had really good relative pitch. He beat the he, they beat the perfect pitch into me. <laughs> no, but um, I, again, I I thought I was gonna be a drummer. Every little black boy, especially growing up in church, wants to play drums. But um, my family history, my dad's uh, piano expertise. Uh, when I moved to Willingboro, they were like, hey, we don't have a bass player. And I know it's 17 drummers here. Like, I know your family. What do you think about playing the bass? And I was like, I don't want to do that. Like, I, that's the time when you don't remember this. You too young. We used to have to walk to school. Come so, on now. <laughs> so when I'm walking to school, a, a pair of drumsticks yes. or a bass guitar. Drumsticks I'm like, day, I'm going right? to take the drumstick. Yeah. And like, my parents were like, yo, just try it. You know, my godfather, who was a bass player as well, who is a bass player. Uh, my dad set it all up. They like, we're going to help you out. And so it was the best decision I ever made to make that switch. And the rest and, uh, is history, The rest right? is history, for sure. And you made the switch from drums to the bass in high school? And In grade school, in second grade. grade. School. Yep. Incredible. Yep. Incredible. So from the borough, drummer yes. initially, now bassist, and just this prolific, worldwide, incredible music director. Yes who knows everybody. <laughs> and now we get to bring you the man behind the music. Absolutely. Because he's like the Quincy Jones, Ricky Minor, Ray Chu of this generation and beyond. Yes. And we're so excited about it. And so the, the beyond is really about the artistry that I'm crossing over into. It's, it's scary. And that's what we want to, that's so what scary. I definitely want to talk about. So yeah. you have this new project, yeah. the Legacy Album. The Legacy Album came out two Septembers ago, but mm -hmm. we have been able to spawn such great responses from it, uh, from touring to, you know, being at the Roots Picnic to Jet Blue Note Jazz Festival to opening for my sister Jill Scott. Um, the Legacy Experience has been all over the world and I'm super super thankful and my new single just came out yes summertime with Fantasia yes. the, the most amazing and that's leading to my new album which is going to be next year um so excited for that for and sure. the name of the album coming out in 2025 next year is humble magic Ooh, humble baby. magic yeah uh, and that to be completely honest I know my gift comes from God but I also know the impact, if I can sit back and look, of what I've been able to do in the industry has been magical for people. So humble magic. Everybody. I love it. Yeah. So this new single, you have to listen to it. It's Gotta called, get it. It's, it's, a, it's a standard. It's, it's Summertime from yes. Porgy and Bess. And Adam Blackstone and Fantasia, just a beautiful blend, a beautiful collaboration. Thank you very but much. That's what he does. He, he's just we tried to update you know? it, you know, a little bit, 2024. <laughs> nice. So a little fact is that 
Fantasia won American Idol 20 years ago with that same song. Now that you say that, yeah, you're right. and so that really was able to transcend her from just being a, you know, the black R&B girl right. to like she can sing anything. And so I'm, we, we're as a as a culture, we're so thankful that even that TV show gave her that opportunity. But I just want to put a little updated spin on it. Also hear her grown up voice. That's right. On it. And right. I think we did a good job. So super thankful for that. And uh, that's, that's leading off uh, the new album cycle. Love it. My name is LaMonda. Of course, we're talking to Adam Blackstone, who is bassist, music director, collaborator, <laughs> extraordinaire, and artist. Um, new album, Humble Magic, which is coming in 2025. Mm -hmm. And what kind of collaborations can we look forward to for the project that's coming up? Yeah, I'm looking forward to continuing to expand the horizons, working with some people that you may not know from music specifically. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, my, my, my auntie, Shirley Ralph, we're going to tap into her. We're going to tap into... Um, she some, can blow. Oh, we my We do goodness. know that. Oh, yeah. No, she sings From now, Dream Girls. Come on. For sure. And another Dream Girl collab, which is a different, is Tashina Arnold. She can blow, too. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> this we know. So I, I'm, I'm expanding just to do a couple of different things and not your tra traditional artists. Okay. Um, like Just that. because, you know... I totally want my music to dive into television and film mm -hmm. and it, and also have a, a legacy that is not just only just for radio. Got it. Um, when you listen to Summertime, again, we listened to that 20 years ago and it hopefully will have the same impact with people listen to this new version. And so I'm, I'm diving into some of those things and, uh, you know, it, okay. it feels exciting. So 2025 is a busy year for you. Yes. We have Humble Magic, his new album, Adam Blackstone's brand new album that's dropping next year. Yes. And you're touring with John Legend. Oh, absolutely. So uh, this is the exclusive. <laughs> oh, this is the uh, exclusive drop. Exclusive drop. <laughs> for the holiday season, my favorite time of year, Christmas, I am going on tour with my brother, John Legend, on the a John Legend Christmas tour. I'll be opening that tour. Um, super, super shout out to John, um, the whole Get Lifted family. Um, he has is giving me the opportunity to play some of my Christmas music from a Legacy Christmas album. That's great. Um, prior to him setting the stage on fire. So we're excited about that. We start in December in California and look out for those dates real soon. That's awesome. Can I get a pair of tickets you to got the it. show? It, okay. That's I got you. Up. I got you. All right, so we got that. And <laughs> I also hear that you're doing something special at the White House for Christmas. Yes. So, um, you know, unbeknownst to me, the outcome of the election when I accepted this mm. gig, it feels good to know that uh, even in transition to the new president, which doesn't happen until January, this will be the last White House event for our current administration. So I'm excited to see uh, President Joe Biden and our Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, and I want to be able to spread a little cheer on their way. You know, now transitioning out, so I'll be at the White House for a White House Christmas uh, early December. That's special, sad but special. Yes, it's going to be. We're going to make. We're going to. We're going to make it a, a, a joyous celebratory occasion because what they've done for us these last four years have, you know, definitely been transcendent and impactful, and hoping that, um, you know. The, the people of us as individuals can mm -hmm. carry on what they've brought no matter what's going on. All so. right. We're going to wrap up. Look for Adam Blackstone, Sherry Shepard show. We can see you December yes, 13th. Yes, December 13th. I'll be on Sherry again, uh, spreading some holiday cheer from a legacy Christmas album. This is awesome. All right. So a couple of things before we wrap up. First of all, do you want to ask me any questions? You're more than you're the more than. So welcome yes, to. I would like to know how did you get your start in radio? Oh, that's a loaded question, and Adam. Then, no, I want to know. And then, like with this, the second part of that is how radio is transforming now to this type of podcast format. How was that for you now getting in front of the camera? Oh my gosh, that was good. Right? Can we get him back in the studio, please? That was please? good, right? That All was right, good, right? I'm gonna give you the quick version. All right, go ahead. I got my start on a radio station in Hartford, Connecticut. Okay in 12th grade, a student radio station, and I was like, I want to be on the radio. Yes, I'm hooked. <laughs> and Steve Harvey literally nicknamed me Little Miss Radio. Uh oh. And the rest is history. That's how I got my start. From Hartford, Connecticut, to Philadelphia, yes. to New Orleans, to Richmond, Virginia, 
to New York City here Amazing. on 107.5 WBLS. Love and that. And it is my first love, and it's a joy. It's you, changed a lot, but it's freaking amazing. It is amazing. It still is. And you, you have been a catalyst to this station, so thank you for all you do. Well, thank sure. you. Thank no you. And I think it's important that we have a chance to sit on the couch and just talk yeah, yeah, to yeah. folks, you know? Yes, we're on the mic in the studio, but this part is important, too. Very and important. this part of radio is here to stay. I don't think it's going anywhere. That's good. That we're probably going to do more and more and more of this stuff, so... Um, I think that's the evolution of radio, and it's just going to keep evolving. Amazing. As long as you keep giving us great content, we're going to keep giving me great conversation for sure. You know? Absolutely. All right, some off the cuff questions before yeah. we wrap. You're a sneakerhead. I am. Yeah, this is a Jordan Three True True Blue. Um, you know, coming to New York, I had a little Yankee spirit in my. <laughs> In my in my in my blood, so okay. uh, I wanted to throw these on. But yeah, I, I am a sneakerhead for sure. Your I most coveted pair of sneakers in the closet. My most coveted pair is actually not what I wear often, but I have an original pair of Yeezys from our Glow in the Dark tour. Whoa! I happen to be musical director for that, and during that tour, Kanye was um, sketching those shoes, and when they finally came out, it was like. I need those, bro. I need wow. them. So people go crazy when they see those. And um, yeah, it's, it, it feels like sneaker history. Okay. Yeah. Can you pull out your cell phone? Yeah, my cell's over there. Can we get the cell real quick? Thank you. Okay. All right. With Adam, Black Adam Blackstone, fun yeah. facts. Here we go, a little fun. It's the most famous person in your phone, in your contacts. You want to see it? Yep. I want you to shout it out. Who would be the most famous? <gasps> Can we say it? Sure. Queen Latifah, I think, is the most famous person in my phone. Oh my gosh. I have a what lot of- What happens if we call her right now? Let's try. Okay. Okay, here we go. We're calling Queen Latifah. She loves WBLS. She rocks with us all the time. Brick City. You wish me a mother for a but you can leave it at the tone. <laughs> That's so cool. Queen, I'm so precious, Black. Um, am I seeing you tonight? We had the blue note tonight. Let me know what's going on. Call me back. Bye. See, when you roll with Adam Blackstone, he's just connected to her body. <laughs> her body. Okay. Thank that you. was a good... That was a good um, question, though. I never really thought about that. That's pretty amazing. Now, when she calls you back, be like, all right, yeah. this is what we were doing. Um, rapid fire questions. Mm -hmm. You ready? Any or Audi? Belly Any. <laughs> Yo. Hip hop or R&B? Oh, man. Both. I got to say both. I'm an R&B head, but what I love, and I don't even know if we, did this be edited at all? <laughs> you know, what I love that the bad boy era did was combine hip hop and R&B. And, and being in Philadelphia, like hearing songs like More Money, More Problems, or Tell Me What You Want From, I was like, oh, the R&B with the rap was so incredible. So, you know, I'm, I have, that's why I say both. Even with Jay-Z adding singing hooks, like Pharrell on the hooks, and Mary on the hook and stuff like that. It was able Method Man and Mary. It's like, um, you know, the 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 combination of hip hop and, and R and B have always, to me, in my era, been synonymous. So, all right. So he won't choose. I can't choose. He from won't that. choose. Yeah, nah. All right. Beach or mountains? Ooh. Do I have to choose that? Because I would say <laughs> neither. I'm a homebody. Yeah, my okay. kids love the beach though, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say beach. My so you kids. Netflix and chill versus going out. Yeah, I um because my job makes me be out a lot. I I, I love being at home, but my kids love the beach like okay. straight up. So like I'm gonna pick beach. All right. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. We are talking to Adam Blackstone. Remember, the album is coming next year. Yes. Humble Magic. We will look for him. Get that oh. cast album. Right now for Hell's Kitchen. Yes. 
We will be rooting for you for the Grammys. Thank you, my dear. Best theatrical album. Yes, best musical theater. Best musical theater album. And uh, the White House performance, which that's kind of private, but still will be with you in yeah, spirit. Yeah, and then catch me on tour Thank as well you. this winter, celebrating Christmas, and uh, we're going to have a good time. I love it. Yes. And I'm going to say this. You got the Grammys, and you got the Super Bowl. Wink, wink, wink. Uh-oh. I probably want to say, catch them the Super Bowl. <laughs> Catch me in uh, February for sure. We're doing something. Okay. We're doing see? something. We're uh, doing we got something. another drop. We'll see. We're doing something. <laughs> February is a busy month. That's what's <laughs> up. Adam, you get the last words. Uh, I just want to say thank you to you and even all all outlets here at WBLS. Like what what you guys have been able to give artists like me the platform to hear our music, to say our story, to uh, get introduced to um, an audience that may not come to a jazz club or um, not, may not have the time to buy a ticket or even funds to buy a ticket. Uh, giving us the voice to do that here is great. And so I just want to thank you um, for that. And just, you know, everybody continue to uh, dream big and trust God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Dream big and trust God. Yep. Adam Blackstone. Boom. <laughs> thank you, babe. Thank you. Appreciate you. Uh oh, she hit me back. Oh, let's see. Let's see what she said. Let's see. Yes, what time are the shows? I definitely want to pull up. Um, I'm supposed to go to the Knicks game. So can I come to the one, the second show? I think you have two shows, right? Yeah. Um, hit me back. Definitely want to see you. There it is. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's a date tonight. Definitely want to Blue see Blue Note, you. pull up. The noodles. <laughs> Queen Latifah is going to Blue Note to see Blackstone. That's right. The noodles. Let's That's crazy. I love it.